do it now? They cannot get away. Hi, Key. How are you doing, sir? Nice to see you. You as well. Congratulations to the movie. Yeah, I loved it to bits. What I loved it, and I loved it, and kind of my relationship with the film is a bit like Puppet's relationship with um, with Marmalade in the sense that I love it to bits, but at the same time. Uh, it left me feeling because of the twists that I don't want to give anything away at all, but because of the twists, it left me feeling as dumb as a box of crayons. <laughs> so well, congratulations from both, on both, on both, on both, my, both senses you. of the meaning. Thank you. That's excellent. I love that. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, the, f- the first thing I wanted to speak to you about then is obviously I don't want to give any of these twists away, but um, how did you kind of come up with the idea? Did you, um, did you kind of reverse engineer it? Did you come up with the kind of the twist first and then go back to the beginning or, or was it kind of an idea that you had and then the twist came later on? How did it, uh, you know, it was to be without giving it away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the, the twists and turns kind of came a little bit later on. It all started with the characters, right? So I, as an actor for 20 plus years now, people have always asked me if you could play any character, what would it be? And I, and I never had an answer for that. So that, that's kind of how it all started was like, how, you know, if I could create any characters, what would they be? Well, here they are, you know, I, um, I thought, you know, it'd be, it, it would be a fun, challenging experiment to, to create um, several characters with a duality to them. Um, and, 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 you know, I've always loved from Shakespeare on like a play within a play, you know, so it's sort of like, how can you um, set the audience going in one direction and then flip it on its head, you know, and sort of, um, be kind of a puppet master outside of that. Um, so, so taking those two things, some rich, colorful characters and a sort of, um, an unreliable narrator, um, you know, then it just became about like, what movies did I love growing up? And it's, it's certainly like the movies of the late eighties and nineties. And, um, you know, I've always loved this sort of Bonnie and Clyde genre. So it was, it was, how can I take that and then, and, you know, put a new twist on that. So, so that's kind of like how it all started to, to meld together. Um, but like you said, it is the, the, the whole thing is, is like a house of cards. So it's like you pull one piece out and it all comes tumbling down. So it was, it was challenging to, uh, to do rewrites over the years to kind of go like, oh, this isn't working. And then if that doesn't work, this doesn't work. So it's, you know, it is, it's finely tuned and constructed in a, in a very specific way. Yeah, definitely. Cause it's, those are, there's, there's a really rocky road when you start going with all these twists that come from from left field, you just, you don't want to annoy the audience. Well, so, that's um, it. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, you write the thing and you go, does this work? Like are, you know, are the twists and turns going to, going to hold people and is it going to work? And I, I could tell very early on with the script, it worked. Um, so that was great. That's one piece of it. And then when you put it on its feet and you kind of, you actually film it and you edit it, you know, is it going to still, can you still retain that sense of tension and attention and kind of lead the audience in a certain, um, direction. And, you know, so much of that is, is on the, the casting. And if you can, um, you know, you know, the movie lives and dies on, on Joe and Camilla's chemistry with Baron and Marmalade and, and whether she can become this sort of red herring that you follow and if she's magnetic enough to to pu- kind of pull you you know pull him and the audience through through the tale yeah. i mean talking of red herrings that was one of my my questions i mean the, the, there's red herrings in there the, and the characters in themselves without giving anything away are pivotal to everything kind of working and for for these twists to kind of Pull the wool from under your eyes, no? Yeah. So how did you go about casting them and how did you prepare them? Did they know the whole script from the word go? Did they know what was going to happen? Yeah, yeah. The script was sent out and, you know, I was looking for a very specific set of performers, right? You know, that I I had sort of like uh, written myself into a, into a corner with these things because it required um, a very uh, special set of skills, you know, people who could give me many layers to a performance and kind of... Um, you know, the biggest challenge I think is tonally if we were all in the same movie. And um, that was, you know, luckily I had thought of Joe quite early on because, you know, he, he's early on in his career, but he has this um, this sweetness and this, 
genuineness to all of his performances and and a vulnerability, you know, that we really needed for yeah, Baron. Definitely like this innocence. Yeah. Even even when he yeah. plays a bad guy, you kind of you root for him. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And like I I just noticed that there was a through line with all of his performances that he always had that um in spades. So uh you know we sent him the script and luckily he um he just loved it. And, and, and from there, I mean, he's such a collaborative guy that we, that we got to sort of work on the accent and the look of the character and sort of decide like, when is he truly naive or when is he kind of along for the ride or when is he, you know, um, so it was, it was just a real joy. And, and sure enough, like he, he brought all of those characteristics that I said, like into the character, um, and more. And I, I think it's going to show him in a different light than people have have seen him so far. Um, with Marmalade, it was, again, a very specific, um, you know, uh, set of, of characteristics that we were looking for. And when Camilla came in, um, she, she just, she just has this innate sort of uh, magnetism, this uh, electricity, this kind of dangerousness. Yeah, so it's such an energetic and fantastic performance. Yeah, amazing. yeah. And she, um, it was just wild watching her because she's, you know, she, she is quite new to the craft. And um, I had seen her in this movie called Mickey and the bear where she's just so like raw and honest. And I was like, yes, like if we can take that and kind of amp it and just give it that sort of like really wild child twist, you know? And um, so it, it, it was deciding when, when to ramp that up and when to bring it down. And she always just had so many layers to it that, um, it was just a real joy, you know, besides that, besides casting those guys, it was like, is there going to be chemistry? And that's always the big question mark that, you know, you can do chemistry reads, you can have them meet, you can talk about stuff, you can even rehearse, but you don't really know until the camera's rolling on that first day. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the, the kitchen scene, if you remember that was the first, that was the first day and the first thing we shot and, you know, it, 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 it needed a lot of chemistry and, and sure enough, I was like, we got it. We got something special here. Yeah. And so, so talking of Marmalade, I, I cannot not speak about the wardrobe and the look that you get you gave her. I mean, was that it feels like you were really, really meticulous about that more, more than anything else in the film, maybe but specifically like the tattoos, the hair, the clothes, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was a collaboration, right? Between a lot of departments and with Camilla and myself. But also, you know, when I wrote this script, it was you you know, you start with a blank page. So it's like, you have to be the head of all those departments as you're writing, right? So you, ha you have to create the costumes in your mind. They're, they are so much a part of the character. They are a character within themselves. So it's, it, I, I, I knew at least the direction that I wanted to go in. And of course, you know, there's a lot of winks and nods to, to movies that I've loved in the past. And that was, you know, by design, that was sort of like, oh, I think I've seen this before, you know, to kind of lead people down that path um, with some tropes and some stereotypes and sort of this manic pixie dream girl or whatever else. And then, you know, how can you sort of flip that upside down at a certain point? But, um, that that that's always what I was aiming for with the costumes was like how I, I want to see these people on screen and just immediately kind of like feel their history, you know, and feel yeah. a sense of their being like right away when you see them. So we had an, an incredible um, uh, uh, costume department headed by Megan Spatz, who helped me make the masks and everything else. So it was the really cool. brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One right here. Oh, that's is. fantastic. Yeah. Was that kind of a hint at something that comes later in the film without giving anything away? Was that kind of a hint that what that's was exactly coming? Right. Yeah. We, it was, uh, okay. we knew that, you know, doing heist films, like such a big part of it is like, what mask are they going to wear to to rob a bank? You know, and, and we had a lot of fun with that. I knew, I knew, again, I was like, I want to do something with three faces, something, you know, again, with that, with the duality that, um, yeah. so we played around with some, some reference photos and things, and then she created those from scratch. Brilliant. Well, thank you for making the wrap. But just to finish off, there's something I wanted to share with you. Um, you even named the car in the film. And uh, for some strange reason, um, it dredged up some buried memories from my childhood. Corporal punishment was a thing at school, and my Latin teacher used to have a wooden stick that he used to bring out called Big Bertha, and he, no, he used to hit us with it. And I was like, oh, no way, Big Bertha's back again. I called my first car Big Bertha. That was where right. that from it was uh in high school i had big birth that was my car that didn't look anything like that it was like an old like nissan Sentra. but 
Yeah, oh, that's funny, yeah, man. Was, yeah, yeah. It was just all, all the names it could have been. All reactions, I guess. Big Bertha, yeah. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on the movie again. It's going to go down a treat, I'm sure. And I hope to, you, hope to speak to you again sometime soon. You as well, man. It's me and you against the whole wide world.